Welcome to the Sanity Project podcast, the place for internet technology professionals whose work-life balance plan has imploded. We are here to provide solutions that will help the IT pro live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hi, this is Joanne Victoria, the host of the Sanity IT Project podcast, and I partner with IT pros in telecommunications, technology, entertainment, and mass media whose work-life integration plan has imploded and who want more success, more confidence, more fun, and more inner peace. The Sanity Project podcast is a platform for experts in the personal development area to share their wisdom, expertise, and solutions that will help the IT pro live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Our guest today is Gary Sirak. Gary Sirak has been helping other people achieve their American dream for the past 35 years. He is president of Sirak Financial Services in Canton, Ohio, a company founded by his father, Stan Sirak, in 1957. The company will celebrate its 60th anniversary this year. Gary has written two books. The first, If Your Money Talked, What Secrets Would It Tell?, This book is about personal finance and the most common mistakes people make with their money. So many people make the same mistakes again and again with their money that Gary decided to do something about it. The second book, The American Dream Revisited, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Results, is a deeply personal topic for Gary. While it's true it was a quirky conversation at a coffee shop that spurred him on to write it, the ideas and beliefs of the book have been with him for his entire life. Gary is here to discuss the most common mistakes people make with their money and how you can avoid them. Welcome to the show, Gary Sirak. Thank you, Joanne. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad that you're here because people and money, it's like, ah, red light, you know, things flashing all the time, and people just really don't know what to do, and they're sometimes ashamed to even discuss that they might have problems. Oh, it's, it's very common. I've been in financial services for 35 years, and it never ceases to amaze me, although some things are over and over and over again. Some new ones come up, and I just shake my head and say, well, I better write that one down so I don't forget it. It's funny, though, the reason I wrote this book actually occurred because my wife and I decided to go to Las Vegas for a short excursion, weekend excursion. It was on a charter deal, so we sat in a plane flew out from Cleveland to Vegas, and on the way out to Vegas, all these people were so excited, so pumped on all the things they were going to do with their money, and I sat and listened to them all around me talk about how rich they were going to get, and they were going to quit their job, and buy a new car and pay off their debt. And it was really pretty amazing. I told my wife at one point that I'm pretty sure the plane would fly on its own with just the energy in the plane. (laughs) fuel. Uh, So not surprising, about three days later, we get back on the plane. Everybody sits in exactly the same seats. And as we're sitting there flying out, it is like really super quiet. And I turned to my wife and I said, I feel like I've been to three funerals and I'm about to go to my fourth. And she said, what do you mean? I said, listen to how quiet this plane is. I said, do you remember how loud it was? And she said, yeah. I said, it's the exact opposite. So I proceeded to just listen to the conversations around me. And and what I realized is these people really thought by going to Vegas, they were going to fix their money problems. They're going to retire. They're going to pay off all their debts. And instead, what really happened is they got clobbered. And now they have two jobs and three jobs, and they're going to have to borrow from their 401k to pay this off. And I thought, wow, what a shame. That's how we are planning for our future. Not a good way. So that yeah. spurred me on to write the book. There you go. It's, uh, it's really sad. I've been to Las Vegas a couple of times. I do not like it because of what it is. Uh, it's just too much noise for me. And I remember one time I played, years ago, I played with a dollar for about three hours. I don't think I could get away with that now, but I don't like to gamble. (laughs) No, it's it's fun uh, as long as you don't take it serious and you don't lose things you can't afford to lose. I have a good time with it, but I am so cautious and I just don't want to give up my hard-earned dollars to a machine or to a table. 
if I can't wear it or sit on it or eat it, I just have, it's just, I'm much too practical. Um, but I know that a lot of people take chances, but they take chances in other ways that are similar to Vegas, I bet, right? Yes, they do. Uh, they make terrible decisions and terrible mistakes. They would have had more fun in Vegas uh, with some of the decisions I've seen. So how, what, what else, what other common mistakes can, do people make with money without trying to uh, have, go to Vegas and, uh, or win the lottery? Well, the, and, and we could talk lottery a lot, but the first thing they do is it, uh, it never ceases to surprise me when someone comes in and shows me their budget and what they make. And then when we add up what they're spending, they're spending more than they're making. So and I ask them, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's just, it's just re, kind of remarkable. And I'll say, okay, how did you think this is going to turn out? If you're making, you know, 40,000 a year and you're spending 45,000 a year, how do you think that's going to turn out? And, and how do you think the ending of this is going to be? And they look at me like a deer in headlights and I tell them, this is not good. This is what you have to fix. You have to get your arms around your budget. Uh, just a stunning amount of people come in with that situation. They just can't stop from buying. And they live on credit cards, I bet. Totally. And, and that's another thing. Credit cards uh, is one of my problems. One of the things I talk about is getting rid of credit cards. And I've had people literally cut up their credit cards in my office once we're done having a conversation because they look at me and say, so I really don't need all these cards. And I say, absolutely not. What you really need to do is have fewer cards and pay the ones off you have and not put any money on anything until you can afford to pay for them. And that is a big problem. So I have a rule when someone comes to me and they're kind of upside down, I'll mention to them that I would really like them to never produce anything that looks like a credit card receipt again until they're out of debt. Oh, they, I, yeah, I totally agree with that. People don't get that. In fact, as a, I just flashed, my synapses flamed up. There was a discussion on Facebook in some group, and I can't remember what, and they were talking about good debt versus bad debt, and I said no debt is good debt. And, you know, the credit cards, and I can't tell you how these people were so hostile towards me. I'm, and these are people I don't know, and obviously, because it's Facebook, and they're going on about how dare you say that people need to be able to spend money on credit cards in order to create a good uh, credit score. Well, obviously, the banks know that, but I, I mean, they were so vociferous with me. It was just, I, I've never been, I've never had anybody react so vehemently about a topic. We're talking about credit cards. And they said people need credit cards. They must have credit cards. And I'm okay with credit cards as long as you pay your bill at the end of the month every month. I, I have no problem whatsoever. I have credit cards. I pay my bills off at the end of the month. But I, bet you're, that, I bet you're unusual. Oh, I, I um, many ways. But, but certainly that <laughs> one too. So we won't go there because we don't want to get too personal. Anyway, no. But I, I look at that and I said, wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. Why would I run a bill up and pay 20% interest, 18% interest? I mean, tell me how that's helping me. I want to know, and I've never really had anyone give me a good answer why that's in my best interest uh, to pay them a ridiculous amount of interest. So I, I just really have a problem with that, Joanne. I, I like credit cards. I think they're great as long as you pay your bills off. But if you start running numbers and before you know it, you can't pay your bills off, that is wicked. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible to get out from underneath them unless you're just a really great disciplinarian and stop yourself. So what other common mistakes do people make with money? Well, they're trying to impress people and buying things they can't afford to impress people they shouldn't even really try and impress. Mm -hmm. And that leads to all kinds of issues and problems. I, I have people that have beautiful homes with no furniture but they're in wonderful neighborhoods. No one knows these people are so upside down they can't see straight, but they are. And the reason is because they want to impress people. Why they want to do that, I don't really understand. It just doesn't make sense to me, but I see it all the time. So they're going on trips they can't afford. I'll give you a great example. I had a client of mine who was a dentist, made a very nice living, about 140, 160,000 a year. And he came to see me. He had $100,000 on credit cards. He had 10 cards at $10,000 apiece. 
the interest he was paying on those 10 cards, I added up the numbers. It was over 20 grand a year. And I said to him, what in the world are you thinking about that you would have 10 credit cards maxed out and you're paying $20,000 of your interest from your income? I said, why do you think that's a good thing? And he said, well, I don't have any problem with it. I said, well, I do. I said, how are you ever going to get ahead? And he said, well, he said, I, I'm not that worried about it. He said, I pay my interest and I keep it so I, you know, I keep them maxed out. I said, well, what about paying them off? He said, well, why would I do that? I said, I can just pay them 20% interest and, and I've had all this great things I've done with $100,000. And, you know, I couldn't make him understand. I really wasn't able to crack through and, and help him. But here's what I thought was really unique. And interesting, um, on the way out the door, he said, oh, by the way, Gary, you'll really like this. I said, yeah, what's that? And he said, well, I just booked a trip for me and my family to go to Disney World. And I looked at him and I said, what are you going to use for money? And he said, well, that's the part you'll really like. I said, I will. He said, yeah. He said, I just got a brand new American Express card. They're giving me 10 grand. And then he smiled and, and then he walked out the door. And so he was perfectly happy taking his family to, to Disney, which I love Disney, um, but meantime, putting another 10000 on a credit card bill. I just uh, stuns me uh, how people respond. I, I don't know where that comes from in life. I think you're really glad that you didn't get him as a client because you would be able to go nowhere. <laughs> nowhere fast. There's yeah. nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. So when you were sitting in that coffee shop and you're hearing people next to you say something and it spurred you on to write the American dream revisited ordinary people, extraordinary results. Are you willing to share the essence of that conversation or whatever you overheard? Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a habit every morning I stop in one of four coffee shops on my way to work and I, I like my mochas and I'm a little picky where I get them from. So I was sitting in a coffee shop called karma cafe in Canton, Ohio, sipping my mocha. It's probably eight o'clock in the morning. And I do what I normally do when I sip mochas. I sit there and I think about my day, my week, my month, I don't know, maybe my life, whatever, but I just kind of drift somewhere. And I clearly was doing that that morning, but four young, I say young because everyone's younger than me, but four college students sat down at a table behind me and they started talking about the American dream. And I picked up on the American dream, so I kind of moved my chair a little closer, backed up a little bit to them, and I went to hear their conversation. And they start talking about credit card debt, and they start talking about college loans and how tough the job market is. And then they started referring to the American dream as the American disaster. And the young man who hadn't said anything listened to all this, and finally he chirped in and said, wait a minute, I don't agree. I, I'm going to get a good job. I'll pay off my college loans. I'll pay off my credit card loans. And he said, and I'm going to have a good life. He said, I, I don't get where you guys are coming from. Well, the three of them really shot him down pretty fast. They didn't really give him a chance to really express any more opinions. And he pretty much got quiet. But after listening to that conversation, uh, they changed the subject and I got up and walked out. And I tell people to this day, that was probably the worst karma I ever walked out of a karma cafe shop. And I was really in a bad mood. But I didn't know what to do. And about three nights later, four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and said, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to refute those three people and I'm going to prove to them the American dream still exists. Well, I think you're right. And I, I will, uh, is your book in the library, I hope? <clears throat> yes, I it like is. To, okay. In the libraries and it's, in, it's actually pretty much anywhere you can buy a book, you can find mine. Uh, online, Amazon, all those places. Good, good, good. Uh, I usually start with the library first because I just wind up buying way too many books. Um, I think that this is really important that people don't understand that you have to work for a living. And unless you're born with a silver spoon, all that jazz, but how many people do you or I, I don't know anybody like that. So, and, and I find that people who inherit everything by and large don't necessarily have their value systems clear. And of course, somebody's going to complain when I say this on the podcast, but that's my experience. So anybody who's listening, this is Joanne's personal experience, not placing a mantle over the world here. But when I look at people don't like to work, they just do anything to avoid working and they working for money, not working to find a job, but working for money and taking anything that comes along. I was out working when I was 15. I had no choice. 
My mother was out working when she was 13. She had less of a choice. She had no roof over her head. So her mother said, get out and get a job. So that's where I come from is the working the working people and not saying I didn't have credit. I have no credit cards. I do have a debit card, but I gave up credit cards. I pay cash. And if I can't afford it, I don't buy it. Mm. I think that's not, um, not what's going on these days, certainly with, with your dentist. Oh no. And, <laughs> and I think you're, you're exactly where I like my clients to be and where I like to be is I pay cash wherever I can pay cash. Uh, I do have some credit cards because I have businesses and we run some things through them. That's fine. But I have a rule and that is that card gets paid in 30 days. We do not ever go over. I never want to see a, a, an invoice from them that says I paid so much in interest. I mean, that just turns my stomach. So my rule is don't buy something unless you can pay cash or pay it off in 30 days. If right. you do that, don't buy it. And so I listened to those college students, and I just was so disheartened by how negative they were. And I went out, I interviewed 25 people all across the country and wrote about 13 of them and really told their American dreams. And by the way, what was interesting, and you'll resonate with this also as much as I did, their American dream wasn't about getting rich. It was about food, clothing, and shelter. Maslow's hierarchy. That's what it was about. Yeah. So it's, it's my family had the same issue. You know, we weren't rich. Uh, my dad was really struggling when he started our business and he was working two jobs, hated the other job, but he knew what he had to do to put food on the table. So it was uh, very interesting and educational for me. I learned a lot during those years and, and it's part of those things that are deeply embedded in my personality and in my brain. Well, I think when people, when it's difficult for people to create food and shelter uh, and those very important things, that's when, that's when they learn. That's when they learn what's really important to them. Uh, hopefully, um, it's the difficulties that make us stronger and you're forced to learn. So what other tips can you get how they can avoid the most common mistakes people make with money? What else would you tell people to do? We've well, got pay cash or 30 days. Okay. Here's another thing. When I find someone who is upside down and, and has credit card debt, I, I have a rule about that also. And that is I want you to pay your bill, whatever you can afford to pay, but I also want to take 10% of whatever you earn and I want to put it somewhere. I, want, I don't care if it's in an envelope. It could be in a bank account, a credit union. It doesn't matter to me where it's stashed. I just want it stashed somewhere because what happens is I find people paying off their credit card and then not having any money, and then going back in and finding themselves trapped again. So I have really set some programs up for some individuals where we have really done that, where they have taken 10% of their pay, and instead of spending it, they've really just saved it somewhere, and the next thing you know, they got $500 they didn't have, and then right. it's you know, $1,000 and $2,000. And I've never seen happier people who felt better about themselves. Their self-esteem went up light years when they accomplished this. And again, it's not rocket science, but it's pretty good thinking. And, and when you get to the situation, it's like I told someone the other day, we were discussing money and he was complaining about not having any cash. And I said, well, the problem with not having cash is that the next crisis you have goes in your credit card and then you're hosed. You're done. Yeah, I'm just thinking here, something just flashed, several things are flashing in my mind. How... Uh, well, I hope you've sold a lot of these books so that you can help people create their own dream, um, help them have it come come true for them. But the basic things about, you know, saving some money, putting it in an envelope, I always call them baskets, you know, what we're, what's in that basket, what's in that basket, what's in that basket. So you always have a backup. I don't think people live with backup plans anymore. Uh, they don't. And in fact, they look at you and they don't even know what you're talking about. And, and you're right. Your backup plan is my backup plan. Uh, I watch my mom and dad sit at a kitchen table and move money from one envelope to another, trying to figure out how to pay their bills. And that putting money in an envelope really has always been something I've done. I still do that. I put money in envelopes. Actually, I did one thing funny though, Joanne. I had I remember buying the book, The Millionaire Next Door, which I really enjoyed by, uh, I think it's Tom Stanley. 
and it was many years ago, and I got a $100 bill, and I put it in a book, and then I forgot about it, and about 15 years later, I pulled the book out to move it to get something else, and a $100 bill fell out. I, it was one of those things where it was uh, very interesting, and we went out and had a really nice dinner. So it's, uh, it's, I, I understand that. Um, after my mother passed away, uh, my father sent me some of her belongings. It wasn't much, but it was what she had. And he thought I would want it, including photographs from, you know, years, family, all that jazz. And then there was a um, Bible. And I, you know, looked through the Bible, flicked through the Bible, and found three $100 bills. <laughs> and that, you know, that's where that was her basket for whatever. It wasn't the only place she had money put away, but that was the one that I received. And I don't think my father knew about it at all because she was the money taker, care of whatever. She was the money caretaker and he was the money spender. But it's, uh, it was interesting. Yep, the money was in the, in the Bible. A good place for it. Definitely. I like that. So I, I have a funny story for you. A client of mine, uh, his family left him a house they had passed away and left them a house and it was tons of pictures. The man, old, there must've been a hundred pictures in this house. And he was complaining to me about the pictures. And he said, God, Gary, there's pictures everywhere. What am I supposed to do with these things? And I said, I can tell you what to do with me. So what's that? I said, take every single one of them apart. And he said, why? I said, the age of your parents, there's a pretty good chance they stash money in those pictures. And he looked at me and says, you're kidding. And I said, no, I'm dead serious. I said, go back to the house get those pictures. He threw them in a box. He didn't even think about it. And he started taking the pictures apart. And sure enough, there, there was a lot of money behind those photographs. He had no clue. He was it's amazing. Pretty, oh, yeah. People stashed things wherever they thought about them. And at that point in time, with the age of his family, that's where they would have hidden their money. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and yet, I don't think anybody, probably your clients, unless they've worked with you for a while, have any money stashed away anywhere else because they don't think of that. It's very, I think people are very narrow minded when they approach money, as you talked about some of your clients or former clients who live in the right neighborhood with the right house and have little or no furniture there because they're trying to impress. And I think that has a lot to do with I don't think anything has changed from hundreds of years ago. You know, I want what they have, quote unquote, but now it's even worse. And I don't think it's changed much where you, it's, it's the exterior that seems to be more important than what's going on inside of oneself. Oh, I agree with you completely. And, and again, it's a lot of show and tell out there, but not much depth. Uh, I, I, I'll give you an interesting story. I had a doctor who recently retired and he moved from a very nice house that was around 4,000 square foot to a, a very small house. And the house he sold was 440,000. And when he bought was 165. And I asked him and I said, just curious, when you move from the big house and did all, I said, what was the motivation? He said, oh, it's real simple. He said, I don't, I'm not practicing where I have to impress anyone. Now I can just afford to pay my bills. Wow. I said, wow. Okay. I said, that was the answer I didn't expect, but that was the one he gave me. He said, yeah, it's just much easier on me. He said, I paid off all my debts with by selling the house. He said, I'm, I'm much happier. I said, great for you. Yeah, good for him that he had the courage to do that. And what would you tell me <clears throat> is something, some advice that you have relied on for years that you always fall back on? Some advice that was given to you maybe by your father yeah, my, my dad was an incredibly wise man. And one of the things my dad did, he didn't have money, and then he had money because he became more successful. But one of the things that my parents really paid attention to was charitable situations, donations, helping other people. And I'll never forget this. My dad uh, helped somebody. He came into our office one day. I was working, and he said, here, I want you to sit in this meeting. And I sat in a meeting, and he literally was helping somebody and ended up writing them a check, which is interesting. It was a friend of his. And I said, Dad, you know, I don't know how much check was. I said, I don't know how much you wrote him for. He said, yeah, I didn't tell you. And I said, yeah, I know. He said, I, he said, I wrote him a check for $2,000. I said, well, did you loan it to him? He said, no. I said, 
you just gave it to him? He said, yeah. I said, why? He said, well, when we didn't have any money, people helped me and they don't have any money. So it's my turn to help them. That's it. And that's what you do every day. You certainly do that with your book, The American Dream Revisited. And people can find out about your book on the website called theamericandreamrevisited.com. And if you go... Julian, you got that Darth Vader thing going right there. Okay, let's just keep talking about other things and tell me when it stops. Okay, I will. That's what I need to know because it's usually less than a minute. I switch. You described it perfectly, by the way. It was really <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of creepy. So, yeah, it's pretty yeah, weird. I, I don't I hear it. Hear so, it. I have yeah. no, and you, I don't know if you can hear me at all. Me at all. But. Oh, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You just come out in a very strange, garbled, sort of Darth Vader voice. It's, uh, I, it's, have, I have no, no idea. idea. I, I, don't I don't know. know. Nobody, Nobody can answer, can my, answer question. my question. Yeah, it's very strange. It it kind of um, doubles up you your voice, and then you hear this garbled. But yeah, it's very strange. So, I yeah yeah I I, I wish it I would go away. I don't I don't it doesn't occur all the time. time. But I have but to advise every guest, guest just in just case, case, and, and they find they that find funny as part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> but but I will I will edit, edit it out. out. But it's, it's just a just new phenomenon, phenomenon here. here. It's, it's, it's like the past month. Past month. So, so I have no, I have no idea, idea if, if it's, uh, Elon, Elon Musk, Musk sending, sending his, his car car up to base, base. If it's, if it's uh, um, all the all sun, the sun and the moon and the blue moon, moon and the red, red, red moon, moon and the blue moon, yellow moon, yellow moon. All the all those moons. But yeah, it's really strange. So it's um yeah it's just really peculiar because everything was crystal clear sharp as possibly could be and then all of a sudden it started a little bit and then it really kind of hit uh, a peak and now it's kind of backing off a bit. Well, just well, tell me, just tell me totally when it's totally backed, backed off so we can get, get, get in. No, we're still there. We're still we're there. Still there. Okay. okay. Well, let's see. So, so I so presume you know, you know about, about Dave, Dave Ramsey, Ramsey, right, and all of his. Oh yeah. Tennessee shenanigans and stuff, and how there's there seems to be uh, not a movement per se. I wouldn't call it that, but there are plenty of people like like you, like Dave, who are coming up and trying to get people to think practically, and you know, look at what they what's really important to them. And, and that's really the whole point is, is, again, you know, I didn't write the book to get rich. It was never my intention. It was just, these are things I've learned. And if they can make someone else's life a little better, that would be very cool. So that was really my motivation. And I've made that pretty clear in any time I've been interviewed because I'm writing books, you know, you have to be pretty famous to make any money writing books. And I'm not that famous. So my mom knows who I am, I guess. Well, that's the most important thing. Your people, oh, your friends. I'm back? Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, when last I mentioned was the advice, and I think we got that one clearly through, the advice that sticks with you is to help the next person as somebody helped you. Um, I hate saying pay it forward because that's such a cliche, but if somebody has helped you on the way up in whatever manner, shape, or form they've done, and people uh, always stop at money – I know years ago when we would go out, when I would still be going out to places, and I would just throw tw- 20s all over the table because it didn't matter to me because I had the money and I spent it, and nobody else had to spend their money because it's just the way it is. If I have it, I'll give it to you. If I don't, I can't. So we move forward with that. But be generous in your lifetime. That's what's really, really important. And go to the American Dream com, and if you sign up for... Uh, Gary Sirex email list. You can get a bonus chapter of the American Dream Revisited. You can also find the book on his website, on Amazon. Just put it into your uh, Mr. Google search and you'll find it all over the place. I want to remind people to go to my website at askjoannevictoria.com and download a free copy of the True Self Handbook, A Guide to Transform Your Life, because as a life coach, that's what I do, help people transform their lives. And the important thing about Gary's episode here, please refer people to it. Call your friends. Call everybody that you know and tell them to download this uh, podcast, Gary Sirak, The American Dream Revisited, and 
listen to what he tells you about money, how people make mistakes about money, how you can avoid these mistakes, how you can have money at the end of your life, or you can have money for fun things. Do you have anything you want to say in closing, Gary? No, except this has been an excellent interview, and I really appreciate it. This has been a lot of fun, Joanna. Okay, good. Well, thanks very much for being here. I really appreciate that. And everybody have a great day. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com and continue the conversation on her podcast page. And get a free copy of her book, The True Self Handbook, a guide to transform your life. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.